this happened to me in the sixth grade. Now, 31-year-old female. I hadn't thought about it in a long time, but I remembered recently and decided to post. There was this girl in my class that would hang around with a couple of my friends. But I didn't really consider her my friend. More like a friendly acquaintance. Anyways, we started off cool with each other. Then as the school year went on, she started trying to start trouble with me for some reason. I have no idea why. To my knowledge, I never did or said anything to her to stir up any animosity. I remember one day after lunch, we were lined up to head back to our classroom and her, my friends, and I were standing there talking. Joking around, she asked me, Do you think this would hurt? And made a fist with her knuckles, sticking out in a weird way. I opened my mouth to answer, but before I could, she punched me in the chest. Not a playful punch, but a hard punch. I didn't hit her back, but I pushed her and called her a stupid bitch. My friends just kind of looked like they weren't really sure what just happened, but none of us really talked to her much after that. Whenever I did come across her, she'd say things like, I'm gonna kick your ass, or your ass is mine, stuff like that. I just told her whatever and that I wasn't scared of her. I was a lot bigger than her. So one day at recess, my friends and I were playing basketball, and she came over and started trying to talk to all of us. She then pulled out a mechanical pencil from a hoodie and showed all of us that she'd put a needle in it. The details on what led up to it get a little fuzzy right here. But I remembered her poking my friend on the hand with it. it made her bleed. And she poked another girl. That was talking to us. Right after that, the teacher called everyone to come inside. So all we started walking and she started acting like she was going to poke me with it. I told her she better not. And as I walked away, she came up behind me and poked me in the back with it. I remember yelling, Ow! And I turned around and punched her in the chest. And she stumbled back, but she didn't say or do anything else. By this point, my friend had told the teacher, and we were sent to the nurse's office to get cleaned up, since she poked us with the same needle. Parents were called, she got suspended. And when she came back, none of us talked to her again. After the school year was over, I never saw her again, until our high school graduation. There was a program our school had for troubled youth slash teens at different locations that I got to walk in graduation ceremony with the rest of us, so I guess that's where she'd been. My mom knew who her parents were, and told me that she'd came from a bad family, where she wasn't taken care of. Never saw her again after graduation. I hope she got the help she clearly needed. This happened many years ago, therefore details might be a bit fuzzy. Me at around 10 years old, my brother at around 15 years old, and crazy old man in his 50s. We lived in an apartment block that was surrounded by a 1.7 meter fence and positioned on a rather sizable plot. At the back of the plot of land, there was a metal pipe construction called Trespack, Polish. It was used for hitting the dirt off your rugs that you hang over, about 1.8 meters tall and 2 meters wide. Very stable and perfect for climbing. Rod tricks and volleyball. Past the back fence of the property, there were rental gardens. A person was able to rent a small piece of land. 3 meters by 10 meters to create their garden, or a veggie plot. You had no idea who rented them. Myself, my brother, and two other kids, 12 and 16 years old, from the same apartment block decided to play volleyball over the pipe net. At one point, the ball went flying, and fell into one of the rental gardens. In this particular rental garden, there was a small semi-open hut that we couldn't see inside from our angle. At first, we called out to see if anyone was inside that I could pass the ball back. Tried a few times, increasing the volume, but there was no response. What does a stupid kid do in such a situation? Climb over the garden, of course. I know we shouldn't have done it, nor was it right way to do it. So we find that there is a sizable hole in the fence between our area and this garden. The size of it is perfect to fit my ten-year-old body. I go ahead and carefully squeeze. 
I make sure to watch where I'm stepping on the soil to avoid any plants. It was far enough in the year to see where things are growing. I make one or two steps over soil before reaching the grass. I go grab the ball and pass back to the other side of the fence. At the moment, the crazy man's run out of the hut and grabs my hair. He pulls them strong with one hand, ribbing some strands and starts hitting me with his other fist. My brother being the hero quickly jumped over and shielded me. He managed to split us apart. I ran back to the hold to get back, while my brother is holding him back. I remember a few shouts exchanged something in the lines of my brother saying, Stop hitting my sister! And the crazy old man saying, How dare you go into my garden! We're sorry, we just wanted to grab the ball. Stop hitting me! When my brother turns around to run back and jump, the old man grabs him on a rod and gets a hold of my brother, as he's able to make his jump. The crazy old man starts hitting my brother with this metal rod and his other fist. He manages to land a few strikes on my brother before he manages to run away. I was bruised up from the punching. My brother was lucky not to have his bones broken. Instead, he got away with a huge swelling and rod marks. We sued the man for the instance. He had to pay us compensation and lost his garden rental. His defense was... They destroyed my carrots. Why didn't you answer when we're calling out? Yes, we shouldn't have entered the garden. But I think repeatedly punching a 10-year-old kid and baseballing a 15-year-old with a solid rod is a bit too much for the crime committed. You could have screamed at us, chased a frighten or a spook, or screamed to our parents and called the police instead of going nuclear. Bonus. I'm not sure if it's 100% true, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's what I've heard from my mom. When I was even younger, one of our neighbors that lived in the block chased kids with an axe because they were playing football. This was most likely around when my brother was 7 to 12 years old. That guy was a nutcase too. try to make this story short, so bear with me. When I was 23 years old, four years ago, I was living alone in a studio, one-room apartment. I just started renting. There were a lot of windows in it along with the backyard, but not very big. Anyways, three weeks in, I started noticing a lot of things, such as my barbecue grill being moved. Not in the same place as I remembered seeing them the night before. I remember out loud saying to myself, what the fuck? But never really giving it much thought. Well, I should have. One evening, I hear some loud bangs on the deck floor above my studio. I guess it's called a balcony. I woke up and just sat there listening, trying to figure out what it was. Not even two seconds later, I hear a crash at the ground level, my level. The back door was a giant glass sliding door and the blinds were outside of it. They were electronically controlled from the inside. I left them slightly cracked at the bottom before I went to sleep. I looked under it, kind of laying on the ground to see, and behold, I see two boots right in front of me. They must have been there trying to hear inside through the blinds. I could feel a giant sense of danger come over me like a fucking blanket. Myself, being a combat veteran, immediately almost subconsciously decided I was going out there. I grabbed my firearm, a Glock 19, and yanked the door open. The blinds were still down to see if he'd freak out not being able to see me, but no, someone's there. I didn't hear a thing. I pressed the button to raise the blinds and step back into the room. Like out of a fucking movie, we eventually made eye contact. He looked high as fuck, or drunk or something. I then said calmly for him to leave, or he will die. He could see the pistol in my hand. Very calmly, he didn't say a word. He just bolted away over the back gate. I filed a police report and that was that. Crazy to think of that now. I almost had forgotten about it. Anyway, this more of the story. Don't sit there and wait to be a victim. Victimize them. Be safe, guys.
When I was 13, my family moved from a village to a city. This city had a fairly high homelessness rate. So, of course, there was lots of people looking for somewhere to stay. So, there's an old family friend who runs a letting agent, who lets me use some of their unoccupied houses as a sort of recording studio. I record music in my spare time. As long as I keep them clean and clear out, and make myself scarce for a while when there's viewings, it works fine for me. So one of the houses on the outskirts of the city, I was in for a while about two years back, it had a weird lock. Sometimes it wouldn't lock properly, and sometimes it would. So one night around eight, I locked up and started my cycle back home, which at the time took about 40 minutes. A rough estimate. So I was home about a quarter to 10 p.m., and I started playing my PS4. About an hour later, I realized I had forgot my wallet. So I cycled back, got my wallet, and decided to check the rooms, just because the lock hadn't locked properly. So, I go upstairs and open one of the rooms. Lo and behold, there was a man, maybe mid-thirties, laying on the bed, like it's his own home. Both of us just look at each other startled. I guess we came to some sort of nonverbal agreement, and I showed him out creepy shit. So, random homeless guy, I wouldn't mind meeting to hear your story. Just not at like midnight in the house that you're not supposed to be in. So in that case, let's not meet. Hi everyone. I've always been a huge fan of the subreddit but have never submitted anything because I didn't really think what I went through was that scary, as any of the other posts on here. However, something happened early morning that has left me still shaking uncontrollably. Also, although I live in North America, English isn't my first language, so sorry for any mistakes. Also, my two female cousins live with us in our basement, since they're students, important to the story. So, I went to bed around 1.30 or 2, and was sleeping in my room. All of a sudden, I'm woken up around 3.30 by my younger brother screaming for my parents. I had first thought that he had a nightmare, or, I don't know, maybe he saw a bug. So, I was like, what the heck, and closed my eyes again. My younger brother sleeps in my parents' room because he finds the bed more comfy, and they just sleep in his room. Not even two seconds later, I hear a loud banging noise on the patio door, connected to my parents' bedroom. I hear my brother scream again. I lay still because I thought I was imagining things. Then, maybe five to six seconds later, I hear my mom go, Go! Uh, I'm calling the police! Leave! And I just sit up. I put my pants on and go, and what I saw just fucking made my heart beat so fast. There was a man standing outside our patio door. He was shirtless, and only had black joggers on. He was also wearing a cross necklace. He was just banging on the door and said, Can I have a cigarette? And what the fuck, we don't smoke, so we said no. And then he continued trying to open the patio door. But one of my female cousins was holding it tightly closed. We thought he was either a drug user or a drunk guy. But still, he would not leave. Then after three minutes, felt like three hours, Jesus, of just standing there, trying to open the patio door, he descends down the stairs. But then he went to the side of her house, and like my dad sprinted to the front door, and guess who it was standing outside trying to get in? Our new friend. My dad is pretty buff slash intimidating looking guy, to people who don't know him. So my dad was like, should I just go out and tell him to leave? But of course, we're all like, what the fuck? No, because what if he has a weapon on him? So again, he tries to open the door, but my other cousin was holding the doorknob super tight. By the way, my mom was on the phone with the 911 operator the whole time, but she wasn't making it seem as scary as it should have been, in my opinion. She was just saying, he's drunk and he's knocking our door. While this motherfucker was literally trying to get in our house. So, I just grabbed the phone and told the operator. Hi, 
I really think you should come right now because she's trying to enter our home. You need to come right now, please. And the lady got the message or whatever. Then the scariest part for me. When I went back to the room with the patio door, I didn't realize he was there because I was just pacing around scared out of my mind. So when I moved the blinds a bit to see if he had come back, which I thought he had, I almost fainted because he was right there in front of the glass. I screamed super loud, and like everyone came running, and I thought I was going to die my heart was beating so fast. It was insane. This motherfucker stood at our door trying to get in for so long, and then went to the front door and tried it again, and then finally left our house area and went further up. So then my cousin decided to open the door to see if he went away fully. But then we saw him walking back to our house direction. And she quickly shut the door again. He went to the side of her house and just stood there. Until the police came and he was gone. So the police brought their dog and stuff. And like 20 minutes later they came back and said that they found him. And arrested him. Turns out he was just shit faced drunk. The scary things to me are the facts that... 1. If he was so drunk, how did he manage to just keep going back and forth between our two doors? Even when he was away from our home a bit further up, he still came back to our place specifically. And 2. The way I described him just doesn't do justice, if that's even the right word. The closest I guess I could describe him as is if he looked like Aaron when he turned into a titan on Attack on Titan. So... Scary drunk guy who was trying to enter my house asking for a cigarette. Let's not meet again. So, this story took place around the end of January of 2020. For reference, I'm a 19 year old female, and I'm about 5 foot 4 to 5'5. Five five. This takes place in Canada, and where I live in Canada, we tend to have a pretty cold winter. That stays until the end of March. But this year, it seems as if the mother nature has new interests in sticking around. Which meant I could walk with my winter jacket open at night. Not really, but oh well. Anyways, so I'm a uni student, and my uni is all the way across the city from where I live. With the bus, it takes me about 1.5 hours to get home. Latest of being around two hours, only during snowstorms. This semester I was taking a night class that would usually end around 9 p.m. On this particular night though, we did have an extra hour because we had an in-class test at the end of the week. This extra half an hour was optional, but since I needed help, I decided to stay. Me staying resulted in me missing the safe bus which was essentially the bus whose last bus stop was local mall, which is where my mom would pick me up usually. If I wanted to take the safe bus, I would have to wait one hour for the next one. Or I could wait another five minutes and catch the bus that would take me straight to my house. I was exhausted because I had been on campus since 8am, and it was really just an overall chilly day. So I decided to catch the bus that was coming in five minutes. I should tell you, I do not live in the safest neighborhood. It's not the most dangerous one in my city, but I'd say it's in the top five of the most dangerous neighborhoods out there. So, whenever the bus ride is fine, I saw the local crackhead, which was nothing new to me, and after about an hour and a half, I get off at my bus stop, which is along this busy-ish road, and I start walking home, about two streets from where I have to turn to get on my street. I see those drunk men standing outside of the bar that's located on the corner of my street. Now, these men don't actually touch me or anything, but they're very vocal about things. They tend to catcall or just harass women, but I'm used to it, so like, whatever, fuck them. However, I was not in the mood for their shit that day, so I decided to turn on one street before mine, and just cut through the back lane later. As I turned on the street, I could see a man walking on the same sidewalk going in the same direction. So I decided to go on the opposite sidewalk. He was quite tall and skinny, but he was like 30 to 40 feet ahead of me. 
Plus, he didn't see me, so I didn't think much of it. Now, the night was very, very clear, and the stars were shining super bright. So, as I was walking, I decided to look up and admire them. I kept walking, and then I stopped. I took a photo, which turned out pretty nice, by the way. So, I stood there looking at the stars for maybe about 20 seconds, and then decided to continue walking. I looked to see where the man was, and just caught him turning left. I had to continue going straight, so I kept walking. Plus, it was very quiet night, so I figured I'd hear someone if they're behind me or anything. I live nearby a train track, and as I crossed the train tracks, I took about 10 steps forward. I heard a tapping noise behind me. I looked back and I saw the same man from before, speed walking about 35 feet behind me, tapping along the side of the cars parked at the side. As soon as we made eye contact, he slowed down and looked up as if he was looking for something. I didn't want to assume anything yet, so I decided to start skipping, while also trying to be a bit faster. I looked behind me again, and this man was not maybe 25 feet behind me, and I just booked it. I ran so fucking fast because the back lane to my house was super close. As I was sprinting, I went to turn the corner to get my back lane. I looked to my side and saw the man running as well. I legit felt my heart drop to my stomach, and I just prayed I could quickly get to the front of my house quick. I ran and thankfully got to the front, but I didn't have my keys out so I'm like out of breath, panicking while looking for my keys in an ungodly speed, and finally after what felt like hours, but was only a couple of seconds I got my keys and opened the door and just slammed it and locked it shut. I caught my breath before going to the stairs because I didn't want to freak my parents out. It's safe to say that I won't be taking any late classes for a while. This event took place quite a few years ago, so unfortunately I don't remember everything that happened, but I remember nearly all of it. Anyways, this happened when I was around 4 to 5 years old, and on Easter Sunday, my family always gathers at my grandmother's house to celebrate holidays, birthdays, etc. So as we do every holiday, my mother and I started our hour-long trip to her house. My mother prefers to live away from all the city commotion, which explains the long drive. We were probably around 20 minutes away from our destination when my mom noticed that we were a little low on gas. So we pulled into this old, almost rustic looking gas station with just a handful of customers inside. It was red and white with a few festive decorations outside and lots of Easter stickers in the two large glass windows that were on either side of the door. My mom having taught me not to talk to strangers, nor open the car doors for anyone but her, trusted me enough to leave me in the car alone, as she went inside briefly to pay for gas. She told me that she would be right back before going to the gas station. It felt nice that day, so the windows in the car were down, so I could feel the breeze while driving instead of the AC. While I was waiting on my mom, I remember adjusting the colorful paper clipping in my Easter basket next to me, then looked out the back seat window. When I looked, I oversaw a tall, older man, maybe around 30 to 40 years old, approaching my window. He crouched down slightly and looked at me. Hi there. What's your name? I remember him saying. At this moment, I remember that I wasn't supposed to talk to strangers. So I told the man that my mom says I shouldn't speak to strangers. He then replied with, well, we can be friends then. My name's Charlie. And now that you know, I guess I'm not a stranger, huh? I guess at the time I thought that he was right. In my mind, I thought, since a stranger is someone you don't know, this man wasn't a stranger anymore because I knew his name. The man and I had a short conversation that I don't quite remember. All I remember is him telling me that I had a nice Easter basket. At this point, I started to get sick, feeling my stomach. But being a child, of course, I don't know why. 
My mom then walked out of the gas station and noticed the man immediately and began approaching the car quickly, asking the man what he thinks he's doing. The man seems to panic and pulls my door handle violently. He quickly realizes that it's locked, thankfully, and proceeds to reach into my window and grab me by one of the wrists in an attempt to pull me out. This obviously scared me a lot, causing me to panic and pull against him on instinct. This caused him to let go and take off running. My mom quickly ran to the car and unlocked the doors. She grabbed me and pulled me into an almost painful bear hug, then inspected me closely, repeating asking if I was okay. I ended up with a slightly bruise and redness on my arm, where he grabbed me, but other than that, I was just shaken up. The reality of what had just happened set in at the moment, and I just remember crying and holding onto my mom, right after I said I was okay. I don't remember anything after this point, but I recently asked my mom about it, and she said that she had called the police immediately after. Till this day, my mom still says that it was the most frightening moment of her life, and claims that if she had gotten there any later, and came back to an empty car, she wouldn't have been able to live with herself. This happened a couple years ago now. I was walking with my boyfriend to the train station late at night, as he had spent the weekend with me and lived in another city. We had just been to the cinema, which was near the train station, so I didn't come out just to walk him to the train. The station was my direction to get home. The film ended around 10pm. We said our goodbyes and when the train pulled out, I waited before turning to head home. The safest way was through a mall. The wall is abandoned at this time, but they leave the lights on, so you can walk through it with no shops boarded up. The end of the mall has a revolving door, which I normally go through and then walk the 10 or so minutes home. I usually run if it's late or dark outside because I watch too many scary documentaries, and I'm paranoid. I get to the end of the mall, and there are a group of guys sat around the escalators, about five or six of them. They look over and start shouting things, but I have no idea what language they're speaking, so I don't know what they're saying to me, or about. I ignore them and head to the revolving door. Two of the guys get up and follow me. By this point, I'm getting really nervous because it's late, empty, and it's just me and some guys being obnoxious as fuck. I quickly go through the revolving door and it stops with a hard thud. I turn around and the two guys are holding it shut. Then the other guy gets up and starts laughing and saying things to me. Another one starts holding the door and kept trying to push it to get out. I stood there frozen for what felt like hours. In reality, it went on for like 20 minutes before they started to yank it so that I had to get back into the mall. My mind was pretty much racing at this point at what I'll do next. I thought I could scream or run through the mall the other way if I was pulled back in. They were pretty much taunting me at this point and pulling and pushing the door. I started banging on the glass trying to get the attention of anyone that might be out at that time of night. That's when they pushed it one last time and I flew out of the door. Without even thinking, I ran as fast as I could, up the road without looking back. When I got far enough, I couldn't hear anyone behind me. I looked back and none of them followed me. It seemed like they were doing it to scare me for fun or more than anything, but I couldn't be sure. I then ran all the way home crying and slammed the main door of my apartment building behind me, automatic lock, and then walked up the stairs to my door and got into my bed and my clothes. I felt so ashamed and scared by the situation that I couldn't find the courage to tell my boyfriend or anyone about it, but it's one of those memories that stuck with me. I avoid them all at night, and I also try to avoid walking home in the dark if I can help it. Guys who trap me in a revolving door for fun, let's not meet again. A few years ago, when I was 17, I was at a county fair. It was around 11 at night, and I was standing with my friends, talking and eating. To understand what happened next, you have to understand it was very crowded and loud. An older man approached me, 
and told me a lady needed my help. I moved away from my friends to hear what he was saying. We were near one of the exits to the parking lot. The man walked me to the exit, but I wouldn't exit with him. The whole parking lot was dark, packed full of cars, and there were no people out there. He was pointing out in the parking lot and trying to rush me, frantically saying, she's over there. Harry, she needs your help. I kept asking, where? I don't see anyone. I could even see far because all the large trucks and vans blocking the view of the whole lot. The man said, she's behind that car, and started pulling my arm. I wouldn't let him pull me and said, no, I, I can't see anyone. Then he pointed off in an opposite direction of the parking lot and said, over there. And I looked. And the only person I could see off in the distance was someone pushing a big cart with trash bins on it. I said, That's someone who works here. And then I walked away from him really fast and went back into the fair. My friends were asking where the heck I went. They didn't even see me leave. When I told them, everyone was tripping out. That I almost got kidnapped. It was embarrassing and I felt really stupid. It's so creepy to imagine what could have happened. I thought that was only something I had to worry about when I was little. I don't want to ever meet him again, and sometimes think about anyone else when I met him in similar situations and it worries me. This story takes place when I was 15 years old. I'm a female by the way. This became the reason why I stay awake some nights and ask myself what I've encountered. So, a little backstory. I grew up overseas, but I usually come back to my country for vacations during the summer and stay over at my grandma's house. This took place during that time. My grandma used to leave me from around 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. for work, and I had the whole house to myself. I enjoyed it until this happened. I was in the kitchen making lunch when I heard someone knocking on the front fence door. So what I mean by that is that my grandmother's home was a three door, two fence doors and one front door. The house in my hometown aren't built like the typical western houses. They're usually built next to each other, touching with their walls. Even if that's not the case, we usually have alleys between homes. I put my food down got out of the house and looked up to the fence. There I saw two women, older than my mother and younger than my grandma. I'd say they were almost in their mid-fifties. I asked who they were and she said to open the door. Keep in mind the time was almost 10 a.m. and my neighborhood was full of people chatting and kids playing. I opened the door. One of the women was standing on our front fence stoop and the other was behind her just smiling. The first one looked well off. She was reeking of perfume and she had what I thought gold bracelets and rings. She shook my hand and instantly asked, are you the daughter of my father and mother's name? I thought I looked stupid because these people knew me. They knew my parents so what kind of harm could they cause? How naive. We were chatting for a minute or so when she mentioned my grandfather. My grandpa has a very well known name and I thought she was just a relative, maybe until she told me she was the sister of my uncle's wife. She asked for my grandmother, and I told her that she wasn't home. She couldn't come in as I was blocking the door. She asked when grandma would be back. I told her another mistake, and she said that she'll be back. I closed the door and went back to the home and brushed it off. I was chilling for a while, and now it's around 11 a.m., the time most people were either taking a nap or just staying in their homes because it's staying hot at that time. I think I dozed off because I woke up to another knock. I got up and without opening the door, I asked who it was. You guessed it. She was that woman's voice. She demanded me to let her in. I simply told her that my grandma's still not home and that she should go. She started begging, but I insisted. She left. My grandmother came home, but I forgot about the whole thing. At the evening, I told her what had happened. She was confused, though. 
She told me that my uncle's wife doesn't have any sisters in the city. She only has one sister, and she lives in the countryside. There was another possibility of a woman being her, and she phoned my aunt. She said that that wasn't true. Her sister didn't come to the city for months now. My grandmother called everyone she knew to ask about the woman, but none of them recognized her. It was my fault for not getting her name, but what I know is, these women were up for no good, and they were probably planning something else. So, two women with sketchy plans, I hope I don't see you again. This happened close to 15 years ago, when I was around 7. I didn't realize how creepy the situation was until many years later. My dad and I went on a weekend motorcycle trip to Maryland from New York to watch motocross racing at the track called Bud's Creek. It was an awesome trip. I loved spending time with my dad and watching the racers speed around this insane dirt track. I met two of the all-time greats for that time. If you're familiar with the early 2000s motocross, you'll know who I'm talking about. They always came in first and second in every race. We did to drive back in one go. It was late at night and we were somewhere in southern Pennsylvania. When I started getting really cold in the back of my bike, my dad pulled over on the side of the I-95 so I could warm up. Within a minute of stopping, a van pulled up behind us and this older couple got out. The man started talking to my dad, saying that they had followed us for some time, and I looked so uncomfortable, and how they were heading north, and I should ride with them in the warm van instead. I remember the man kneeling down and asking me if I wanted snacks. They had in the van, and if I wanted to go to Hershey's Park. My dad is a pretty tough guy, and I remember him talking to them in a hushed voice, probably so I wouldn't hear him threatening them. He told me years later that he told them that he had a gun strapped to his hip and they better drive away right now before he used it. They continued to try and convince him, but they left after a few minutes. I'm probably out of the preferred age range now, but hey, probable child abductors, let's not meet. This happened last Friday night. I'm finally home and I need to take this off my chest. My friend's family owns a pretty big house in a rural area in my state where they spend most holidays and vacations and an apartment a few blocks from where I live, downtown. His folks usually go there once a month to check the maintenance and mail, but since we're having a pandemic, they're not going out to do so. My friend rang me and asked if I could join him because he needed a pair of extra hands, and it's a four and a half hour drive. He came up here to pick me up and we left around 3pm due to his work, home office. We arrived, parked the car and went to check the house, since it was already dark to check the surroundings. The house was fine. We had a couple of beers, watched some old DVDs, ate some frozen pizza we took with us and went to bed. During the night, we heard a loud noise coming from the front door. We both woke up from the noise and went there to check. It was closed just as we left it. We decided to check the house and see if everything was okay. I must add that this house has a door connecting to the kitchen to the garage, which has only two lamps near the door. Just as we entered the garage, my friend stopped with his eyes wide open. Before I could ask him what was wrong, I heard somebody breathing loudly. I looked to the car and could only lock eyes with somebody hiding behind this car. We immediately ran back inside, locked the garage door, and went to call the cops. He grabbed a knife. The cops came, searched the garage, and found a backpack with a hatchet and duct tape. They said it was probably somebody who knew my friend's parents' routine, worked for them in the past, and was ready to attack them. The door was not forced, and that probably indicates that they had been there and knew how to get in. He escaped by breaking a window in the garage. We gave our statements, stayed up all night, and called his parents in the morning. We had to stay there while the windows and locks were being replaced. So, person with those crazy eyes, let's not meet.
I live in Midland, Perth, Australia, a pretty shitty neighborhood. Went to walk in the servo tonight at 2 a.m. because we're bad people and relapsed on quitting smoking tonight. Husband just found out that his grandpa is terminal and I wanted to grab us more so husband wouldn't have to wake up when he woke up. I stayed up late because I'm American and I need to deal with stuff back home. I've lived in Skyline in San Diego, but I've honestly never felt unsafe at night as a woman there. Not tonight. Halfway to the servo, I saw two guys on bicycles riding on the sidewalk. So, I waited at the corner of the street lamp until they passed. They kept looking back. I splayed my keys between my hands, kept walking, always looking back and forth each time, cautious about dark patches. Saw one of the biker guys coming up behind me, looked back directly at him and didn't stop looking. He said hi. I grunted. He turned down the road up ahead, and I kept watching. Saw him dart back from the street and he turned down the crossroad in front of me and vanished in some bushes ahead of my path to the store. Looked back and saw another guy on the bike approaching. Suddenly this ut screeched into a close gas station I was approaching and whipped into a U-turn to drive straight at me. I turned and started to run, and then I heard my husband's voice. He was the driver. I quickly ran back to him and got in the car. We hit up the servo, and he went to the window. I stayed inside shaking, and then went home. As we drove home, we saw the dude on the bike, prowling the street I had been walking on, slowly cruising and looking into bushes, as if he was trying to find someone. Also saw another guy on a bike doing the same thing on the other side of the street. I asked my husband why he came for me. Apparently the cats woke him up because they were freaking out over me being gone. Those two bike guys loop back for a reason. I have no doubt in my mind. Innocent people up to nothing don't stalk women. Hide in bushes and then try to find out where the woman went. Fuck. Creepy bike stalkers. Well, let's not meet again. Last year I was living with some friends in a share house, and one of our housemates moved out, so obviously we needed someone to replace them. One of my housemates, Ian, who was a very close friend of mine at the time, suggested a good friend of his that I had never met, Jenny. I had never met Jenny before, so she swung by the house for a cuppa and a chat. Everything seemed okay, but I was sick and anxious the whole time she was here. I'm a very perceptive person, and I think due to surviving a lot of traumatic situations, I have a keen tune for sense, and when I find something is wrong with someone, I couldn't really pin it down why I felt so uncomfortable around her, so I let it go. She moved in, and instead of bringing the pet rabbit she mentioned when we first met, she brought two rats, a male and a female. The female being pregnant. This rat gave birth to two litters during the time I lived there, and though it might not seem like much, it bugged me because I can't stand people who just let their animals breed, with no thought to their quality of life. Then came the second litter of rats, after the last of Lot had gone to the pet shop. Not sure I believe that, but we're going to escape past it. One of the males in the new litter developed a problem with one of its testicles, that led them to becoming ginormous, and the baby rat died. Jenny was away for a day when we first discovered it, and we told her when she got home that afternoon. The gangrene grew over a couple of days. She could have taken him to the vet at any point, but she didn't. We ended up reporting her to the RSPCA, and took the rats away from her to raise them ourselves, and find a better home for them. Anyways... Jenny was a weird one, not the weirdest I've lived with, but she was either never home or locked in her room screaming and crying on the phone. I put it down to her having a tough time probably dealing with the same sort of depression or whatever the rest of us were dealing with. She's been living with us for a few months when I went away camping with a bunch of friends. Among them was a friend of Ian's who I'd met a couple of times named Brad. We hung out with our friend group and 
and actually had a few really good conversations. And during one of these conversations, Brad opened up a bit about dating Jenny. Not only was she emotionally and physically abusive to him, she also attacked him after he found her cutting the feet off of a bunch of baby rats a few months ago. Obviously, they broke up. And because of this, Brad hasn't been super close to Ian for a while now. I have no idea why the hell Ian thought it was a good idea to bring her into the house. All of this was terrifying for me because when we got back, I was supposed to hold down the fort while my other housemate went overseas for a couple of weeks. So it would be me, my cat, and two of the rescued rats alone in the house with Jenny. Animal abuse and partner abuse are the two major signs of a future serial killer. And I didn't want to be alone attempting to protect three small animals from a violent animal abuser. The others didn't seem to understand how terrified I was. So I just moved out. Fuck the whole thing, honestly. I ended up couch surfing at a friend's place with my cat for a month. But it was better than living with someone like that. So... Creepy, boyfriend bashing, animal torturing ex-housemate. Let's not ever meet again. Hey friends, thanks for watching the video. If you have a suggestion for the next video, I'd love to see them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon and hit all notifications to get notified when I drop a new video or stream. And if you'd like to get early access to my videos before anyone else, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you get that and some other fun perks for just $1 a month. And I have my podcast now available with all my past videos that can be found on all major podcast services. I also have some new merch available on Spreadshirt. All links to these and my social medias will be in the description field down below. And remember, number 15, gigantic rat testicle.